my name is Philip. I'm a design engineer here at Gorilla. Thank you for your purchase of a Gorilla All Season Trainer. I'm going to walk you through how to turn one of these into your final product so you can get out in your backyard and start training for some sports. Okay, the first thing I would advise you to do is remove all of your parts carefully from the box. You will notice that all the parts are individually bagged. This includes your hardware. For your hardware inside the bag, they're all individually bagged. Please keep them separate so the hardware looks similar. And if you combine them, it'll cause problems later on. So don't really remove anything until the manual tells you to or I tell you to later. Okay, step one. First thing you're going to do is you're going to want to lay out your goal frame just like this. You're going to need two P4 bars, one P3. P3 goes to the top. You can switch it. doesn't matter. It's symmetrical. P4s. This can go on that side. That can go on this side. It doesn't really matter. These are also symmetrical. <clears throat> These pieces though, this is P1L. You see these two D rings right here, one over here. The two that face each other want to go towards down. See, they're facing the P4. Same over here. The two facing each other, down. Facing your P4 bar. Now with that set up, it's time to go get our hardware. Okay, now it's time to put these parts together. You can notice this hole has a threaded insert in it. This hole does not. When I put these two pieces together, there are going to be two separate types of hardware for each of these holes. The first kind, you're going to have an H1 bolt. It has Loctite on it. You're going to take your H6 lock washer and stick it on the bolt. And then you just take a normal H5 washer, stick that on it, and then thread that into the hole. And tighten it down with the Allen wrench that came in your kit. The other hole is a little bit different. You have an H2 bolt that's different than the H1 right here. Push it up from the bottom, followed by your H5 washer, then your lock washer, then you have your lock nut. You just put it on top. That's going to take a half inch wrench that is not included in the part. I have one right here. Okay, so now that I've finished screwing my frame together, grab my front dampening net, has the G on it. I want to make sure the G is facing the ground, just like this. There's nothing on the other side, so you shouldn't see anything here. And these loops, I'm just going to face them towards the P3 bar at the top and position the net so that there are two loops between every D loop. So D loop, two loops, D loop, two loops, and it'll continue that pattern all the way across. Okay, the first thing you want to do is tie a quick double knot of your cord to this first D loop here. So just tie your first knot, followed by your second, it'll have to be real pretty. Get it tight. You don't want a lot of excess here. If you have any excess at the end, you can always cut it off and then uh, burn the end so it doesn't fray. But you don't want to run out. And then all you do is you feed this through. You will notice I feed through two loops every time before I reach another D loop in the frame. So you notice, pull this through, two loops, one, two, D loop in the frame. I'm just gonna do the same thing all the way across. Go through the first loop, second, then the D loop. Okay. Now that I've woven the P19 cord through my ball dampening net, I'm going to tie it off on this D-loop right here. I want to make sure that this cord is fairly tight. I don't want it to sag because if it sags, the net will be able to hang down. So you want it to be held up. And you so pull it relatively tight, keep the tension, and then make two more knots just like you did on the other side. Okay, now that you've done that, you're going to grab the two pieces that look like this. They look the same, but they're not. You'll see the gorilla on one side, it's not on the other. So when you put it in, just like this, make sure the gorilla is facing the outside. Same for the other side. Then, you grab your two P7Bs. These parts are completely symmetrical. There's nothing different about them, so just make sure the holes line up with the holes here. Slide it on. 
might hang. It's okay. Just don't step on it. Now we're going to repeat the exact same hardware steps that we had for putting on the frame. There are really no differences. Okay, after you have these screwed in, it's time to get your goal net. This is your giant net. You'll notice on the lower side it says gorilla on the bottom. On the other side it has the G with the gorilla on it. You want this facing up. So, I'm just going to throw it over. And then here's where you might need another person. To help slide these right here onto the tubes that you just put on. So. Simply grab it, open up your end, hit it on the tube, and you slide it on. It will go over the hardware that you just put on before. done with that. There are two pieces that look just like this. There's a right and there's a left. Okay. The way you know, there's a giant hole down here, right here, this hole. Not on the other side. This hole, after you put it on, should be facing the middle. You can see, hole. I'm simply just going to slide it on. This piece can be a little bit harder to work with because fitting it in, but it should slide on. If not, Get a rubber mallet and lightly tap it into place. Same thing on the other side. Hole facing the middle. If you don't do this right, things won't work. But you should do it again just like that. And then just like before, same hardware steps, same type of holes. Okay, now that all your hardware is in place, you're going to grab your two fiberglass rod pieces. All you need to do is slide them together just like that. Come over to your net. You'll notice there's a small slit in it. Simply take your fiberglass rod, push it through. Just push through. Simply fit it into these holes from the core. So that side just slide in. And then on this side, you can bend your fiberglass rod to help get it in the hole. Once it's in, it'll lock into place. That's what it'll look like when you're done. Okay, now it's time to put your side nets on. You're going to grab one of the two P20 cords, and you're simply just going to make a double knot in this hole right here. simple weaving process so unlike before for this you only have one before you hit the loop it's the same thing for the next one then when you get to the bottom you'll have two 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 and on this last one you'll actually have three you're going to do the exact same thing that you basically did to put on your dampening net Okay, so I'm about ready to finish this up. You'll notice there are two loops close together, and there are two D loops close together. You probably won't have anything going in between these two, so it's okay. Just feed your through both, and then tie the knot right in between. You want to also want to make sure this one is also tight. You can come up here, feed it through, make sure there's no hangups anywhere. Now that you've completed the goal section of your rebounder, it's time to focus on the rebound section. As you can see, I've already assembled the top part of the rebounder. It's the part P7A. It has your date code sticker on it. This goes at the top. Make note when you're setting this out, all the pieces have the two holes facing upward, not the one. So make sure that's that way. Once you have it set out, these bracket side pieces should be on the outside facing up. Same on this side. Now, these two P12 pieces, okay? They are interchangeable. This one can go over here and vice versa, but there's a hole on the side. This hole 
needs to be closer to the top than it is to the bottom. This is extremely important. Make sure those are facing the side, lay that out. I also have assembled this bottom piece. Note, these side corners have step bushings for the wheels. Make sure those are located on the side. Once you put the wheels on, they go right here. If it's facing top and bottom, it won't work. So I'm just going to put this together by sliding these in. Come back to the top section. Push push of these in at the same time. After doing that, just attach all your hardware, just like we have been the entire time. Then we'll put it on the top of the corner. When you're attaching these corners, there's a left and right here as well. These are where, what your wheels attach to. So you want to make sure that they are facing this side, facing up. You want these on the sides, not on the bottom. If you put them on the wrong way, they'll be on the bottom and it won't work. You have to take the whole thing back apart. Now it's time to attach your rebounder frame to your goal side. You want to take these little H8 step washers, bushings, whatever, stick them into these holes just like that. Okay, before you start this process, you're going to need another person to make sure that you both have an H3 bolt. That's different than the other ones you've been using so far. This is so whenever you have this held up here, you can go ahead and put it through the hole and attach it. You don't have to hold it anymore. So go ahead and lift it up. You're going to flip it so that these are facing the inside. This next step is going to be putting in more step bushings. These go right here. You got some on each side. Go ahead and grab that one. And then right here. And take the other four and do the same thing on the other side. It's now time to attach your angle adjustment mechanism. So all you have to do is grab your bolts. and the lock nut, and then we'll repeat the same process on the bottom. Tighten that up, repeat the process on the other side, and we're ready to go to the next step. Okay, now it's time to attach your wheels. All you're going to do is take your bolt, slide it through your wheel, just like that, no washers. The big wheels, the P24s, they go on the rebound side, so there's a lift, push it through, and attach your lock. Small wheels, the P23s, same thing, no washers. Just push your bolt in, they go right here. Put it on and attach your lock nut. We'll do the same thing to the other side, and then after we have all four wheels on, we'll tighten things up and move on to the next step. Okay, on to the fun stuff. You get to attach your rebound nut. Your trainer should come with two of these. You only need one for this step, and I'm going to show you how to put it on. The nut is square, so you don't need to worry about which side. All you need to do is find a corner, put one of the bungee loops through it, Attach it just like that. Take another one, put it through the same corner, and attach it just like that. Now go across and repeat through the corner, wrap around the top, through the corner, wrap around the side. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom two.
you just work your way around. You will have six on each side to try to spread them out evenly. If you ever have any trouble getting the net on, you can always enlist the help of a friend and I'll show you how they can help with the process. What you're going to do is come up, put the thumbs in the net around the spot where you want to put the bungee and lift up. You just come in, wrap the bungee around, hold it, and then they let go just like that. Okay, now your all-season trainer is ready to go. We really appreciate your support and your purchase. Go outside and have some fun. Thank you very much.